of my friends, it's McGruff the Reading Dog, and I'm here again with Mr. Stokely to read with you another story, and boy, does he have a special one for you today. A woo! Hey, McGruff, how you been? Oh, I've been pretty good. Been better, but not bad. Well, good deal, McGruff. Well, I hope this story will help cheer you up a little bit. Mwah. All right, friends, I do have a good one for you. This is my all-time favorite book in our library at school. And I'm asked all the time, Mr. Stokely, what is your favorite book? Well, I've got a lot of them, but this one tops the list. This is called Mike Mulligan and His Steam Shovel. It's written and illustrated by Virginia Lee Burton. This book has been around since 1939. Can you guys believe it? It's been around for a while. It's over 80 years, I guess. And so I hope you enjoy it. It's an oldie but a goodie. And you know, it doesn't matter how old a book is, as long as you get some enjoyment out of it. And I think you'll really like this one. So here we go. Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. Here we go. And... It says, to Mike, and Mike's a little boy here in the story. Mike Mulligan had a steam shovel, a beautiful red steam shovel, and her name was Mary Ann. Mike Mulligan was very proud of Mary Ann. He always said that she could dig as much in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week, but he had never been quite sure that that was true. Mike Mulligan had been, and Mary Ann had been digging together for years and years. Mike Mulligan took such good care of Mary Ann that she never got old. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who dug the gray canals for the big boats to sail through. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who cut through the high mountains so that the trains could travel through. And it was Mike Mulligan and Marianne and some others who lowered the hills and straightened the curves so, or to make the long highways for the automobiles to travel along. And it was Mike Mulligan and Marianne and some others who smoothed out the ground and filled in the holes for the landing fields of the airplanes. And it was Mike Mulligan and Marianne and some others who dug the deep holes for the cellars of the tall skyscrapers in the big cities. When people used to stop and watch them, Mike Mulligan and Marianne used to dig a little faster and a little better. And the more people stopped, the faster and the better they dug. Some days, they would keep as many as 37 trucks busy taking away all the dirt that they had dug. Dum, dum, dum. Then along came the new gas shovels and electric shovels and the diesel motor shovels. And they took all the jobs away from the steam shovels. And Mike Mulligan and Marianne were very sad. It says here on the fence, no steam shovels wanted. All the other steam shovels were being sold for junk or left out in the old gravel pits to rust and fall apart. Mike loved Marianne, and he couldn't stand to do that to her. He had taken such good care of her that she could still dig as much in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week. At least he thought she could, but he wasn't quite sure. Everywhere they went, the new gas shovels and electric shovels and diesel motor shovels had all the jobs, and no one wanted Mike and Marianne anymore. Then one day, Mike read in the newspaper that the town of Popperville was going to build a new town hall. We're going to go dig the cellar of that new town hall, said Mike to Marianne. And off they started for the town of Popperville. They left the canals and the railroads and the highways and the airports and the big cities where no one wanted them anymore. And they went out into the country. They crawled along slowly up the hills and down the hills till they came to the little town of Popperville. Well, when they got there, they found that the selectmen were just deciding who should dig the cellar for the new town hall. Mike Mulligan spoke to Henry B. Swamp, one of the selectmen. I heard, he said, that you're going to want to use your steam shovel for my town hall. That's right, said Mike Mulligan. Marianne and I will dig that cellar for you in just one day. What? 
said Henry B. Swamp. Dig a cellar in a day? It would take a hundred men at least a week to dig the cellar for our new town hall. Well, sure, said Mike, but Mary Ann can dig as much in a day as a hundred men can dig in a week, though he had never been sure that that was quite true. And then Mike said, if we can't do it, sir, you won't have to pay. Well, Henry B. Swamp thought that this would be an easy way to get part of the cellar dug for nothing. So he smiled in a rather mean way, and he gave the job of digging the cellar of the new town hall to Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. They started early in the next morning, just as the sun was coming up. And soon, a little boy came along. Hey, mister, do you think you're going to finish by sundown? He said to Mike Mulligan. Sure, said Mike, and if you stay and watch us, we'll work faster and better. We always do when someone's watching us. So the little boy stayed to watch. Then Miss McGillicuddy and Henry B. Swamp and the town constable, that's the town sheriff, came by to see what was happening, and they stayed to watch. Mike Mulligan and Marianne dug a little faster and a little better. This gave the little boy a good idea. He ran off and told the postman with the morning mail, the telegraph boy on his bicycle, the milkman in his cart and his horse, and the farmer and his family coming into town for the day. And they all stopped and watched. And that made Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann dig a little faster and a little better. They finished the first corner neat and square. But the sun was getting higher. Guys, do you know how many corners there are on a square? There are four. And they just finished one, and they've got three to go. Clang, clang, clang! The fire department arrived. They had seen the smoke and thought there was a fire. Then the little boy said, Hey, why don't you guys stay and watch? So the fire department of Popperville stayed to watch Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. And when they heard the fire engine, the children in the school across the street couldn't keep their eyes on their studies. The teacher called a long recess, and the whole school came out to watch. And that made Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann still dig a little better. They finished the second corner neat and square, but the sun was right up in the top of the sky. So they finished two. They've got two more to go before the sun goes down. Now the girl who answers the telephone called up the next towns of Bangerville and Bopperville and Kipperville and Copperville and told them what was happening in Popperville. All the people came over to see if Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel could dig the cellar in just one day. And the more people came, the faster Mike Mulligan and Marianne dug. But they were going to have to hurry. They were only halfway through, and the sun was beginning to set. They finished the third corner neat and square. One to go, friends. Never had Mike Mulligan and Marianne had so many people watch them. Never had they dug so fast and so well. And never had the sun seemed to go down so fast. Hurry, Mike Mulligan! Hurry, hurry! said the little boy. There's not much time left! Dirt was flying everywhere, and the smoke and the steam were so thick that the people could hardly see anything. But listen, bing, bang, crash, slam, louder and louder, faster and faster. Bing, bang, crash, slam, louder and louder, faster and faster. Then suddenly, all was quiet. Slowly the dirt settled down, the smoke and the steam cleared away, and there was that cellar, all finished. Mike took off his hat and took a bow as all the people in the town began to cheer. Four corners, neat and square, four walls straight down, and Mike Mulligan and Marion at the bottom. And the sun was just going down behind the hill. Hooray, said the people. Hooray for Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. They dug the cellar in just one day. But friends... Have you noticed that there's a problem? Hmm, think about that. Suddenly the little boy said, How are they going to get out? That's right, said Miss McGillicuddy to Henry B. Swamp. How's he going to get his steam shovel out? Henry B. Swamp didn't answer, but he smiled in a rather mean way. Then everybody said, How are they going to get out? Hey, Mike Mulligan, how are you going to get your steam shovel out? Mike Mulligan looked around at the four square walls and the four square corners, and he said, Well, 
We dug so fast and we dug so well that we've quite forgotten to leave a way out. Nothing like this had ever happened to Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann before, and they didn't know what to do. Nothing like this had ever happened before in Popperville. Everybody started talking at once, and everybody had a different idea, and everybody thought that their idea was the best. They talked and they talked and they argued and they fought till they were worn out, and still no one knew how to get Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann out of the cellar they had dug. Then Henry B. Swamp finally said, well, the job isn't finished because Mary Ann isn't out of the cellar, so Mike Mulligan won't get paid. <laughs> and he smiled again in a rather mean way. Well, the little boy, who had been keeping very quiet, had another good idea. He said, Why couldn't we leave Mary Ann in the cellar and build the new town hall above her? Let her be the furnace for the new town hall, and like... Let Mike Mulligan be the janitor. Then you wouldn't have to buy a new furnace, and you could pay for Mike Mulligan for digging the cellar in just one day. Now, friends, do you see this? This is called an asterisk, and that tells us that there's something to be said down below. So watch this. Acknowledgements to Dickie Birkenbush. He's the one that came up with the idea with what to do with Marianne and Mike Mulligan said Henry B. Swamp, and he smiled in a way that wasn't quite so mean. Why not, said Miss McGillicuddy. Why not, said the town constable, who also happened to be the sheriff. Why not, said all the people. So they found a ladder. They climbed down into the cellar to ask Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. Well, why not, said Mike Mulligan. So it was decided, and everyone was happy. They built that new town hall right over Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann, and it was finished just before winter. And every day, the little boy, whose name was Mike, goes over to see Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann, and Miss McGillicuddy, she takes Mike nice hot apple pies. And as for Henry B. Swamp, he spends most of his time in the cellar of the new town hall, listening to the stories that Mike Mulligan has to tell, and smiling in a way that's not quite so mean after all. Now, when you guys go to Popperville, be sure to go down into the cellar of the new town hall. And there they'll be, Mike Mulligan and Marianne, Mike in his rocking chair, smoking his pipe, and Marianne beside him, warming up all the meetings in the new town hall. There you go, friends. My favorite book of all time, Mike Mulligan and His Steam Shovel. I remember when I was in second and third grade, I would love when I read this book. And I bet I've read it at least a hundred times in my life, and it gets better every single time I read it. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed it so much. Remember, reading is succeeding. And also remember that your teachers and myself, we love you very much, and we can't wait to see you back for the new school year. Remember, when the Tulsa City County Library opens back up, go there and check you out some good books. It's always great to play. It's always great to watch TV and play video games, but it's even better to exercise your mind and read a good book. Love you guys. See you soon.